All right, all right, we are here with a Tuesday night special. Now, I rarely review movies on weekdays. Rarely Tuesdays, rarely Mondays, because of work in school. But today, I made an exception because I have time. Not much time. I have time to put up my schedule. Today's movie review, I finally have it. It's been out in the theaters. It's finally on DVD. Today, it's Shang-Chi, Legend of of the Ten Rings. It's directed by Destin Daniel Cretton and Simu Liu is Shang Chi. Let's get this story. The story is about the origin of Shang Chi, but also the Ten Rings. Where we start off in the beginning, get a narration. It's about the Ten Rings, and the Ten Rings is being possessed by Shang Chi's father, who's portrayed by Tony Leung, and he is portrayed as a village destroyer. He's a man who's been around for centuries, destroying villages and stealing artifacts, and he also possesses the Ten Rings which aid in his destruction of the villages. However, however, there was one village he was unable to destroy. That was, I believe it's Tao Lo. He was unable to destroy that village because the village it has a mystical force around it. He was unable to defeat. And there he met his wife. They had a kid named the Shang-Chi. And they, both of them taught him the mystic arts. To become a warrior like them. However, tragedy, tragedy struck. Some of the survivors of the villages that were destroyed by Shang-Chi's father became the Shang-Chi's palace. They were going to kill Shang-Chi's father. But since he wasn't there, Shang-Chi's mother took the fatal blow. Shang-Chi's father came back to the house, found his wife dead, and he was distraught. He went to the gang's hideout and killed them all. Then he trained Shang-Chi to become a warrior like him. He wanted him to go after the gang's leader. Shang-Chi went along with the mission, but he fled. And for 15 years, this man has been hiding out in San Francisco. In plain sight, he's a uh, parking valet, you know, where you pay someone to park your car when you're at an expensive restaurant or hotel. Yeah, he's one of those people. And shang -Chi's father, he finds out where he's at. He sends his men after him. shang -Chi fights them off. So he has no choice to go to Japan to reunite with his father. Shang-Chi's father, he's mentally breaking down. The reason why he wants Shang-Chi is because he wants to reunite with his wife. He wants to save Shang-Chi's mother. He's hearing voices. He's hearing voices in his head, save me, come free me. Tony Leung, he believes that his wife is being held in the prison. So we bring Shang-Chi in, he, he debriefs him on the mission. And he gives Shang-Chi a story of how many names he's been called by. You know, the, the village destroyer. Or the warrior king. The Mandarin. But apparently, uh, Tony Leung's character. I forgot, I forgot the name of his character. But, there, but apparently, he's the real Mandarin. I don't know if he's the real Mandarin for sure. Or just another variation of the Mandarin. But I couldn't care less about the Mandarin character because Iron Man 3 ruined it for me. It, 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 they had Trevor Slatter, he beat a Mandarin, but then it would turn out to be Ultra Killian. Don't know who the guy was, they didn't care. But moving on. Shang Chi has doubts. Says his mother's gone. Says his father's going crazy, is he? 
that's where he get, that's where Shang Chi goes to Tao Lo. And there is a legend that there is a evil monstrous dragon that's being held captive there because of its destructive nature and its brainwashing Shang Chi's father. Shang Chi's father he goes to the village he brings an army with him. He frees the dragon. He thought it was Shang Chi's mother. Once he realizes his mistake, Shang Chi, his father, he sacrifices himself for his son, and Shang Chi has no choice but to defend the village by himself, except for his help with his aunt, his sister, and his friend Kate. That's pretty much the story for this movie. What I liked about the movie. Sam with Liu, I think he's great. The action is good. I'm glad they focus more on the martial art and mystical arts side of things rather than the usual, you know, action, big hits, and CGI stuff that they always do. The humor in this movie is pretty cool as well. Aquafina's character Katie, she's fun. Not a big fan for MCU humor. That's not why I watch these movies. But her humor was fine. You know, sing the Hotel California song or, or learning how to pronounce Shang-Chi. Like, that was funny. She really brings the humor to the intense situations. Like the story. You know, the plot's all right. You know, it's a refreshing Marvel movie. It's not like an Iron Man or a Thor movie. It's very different in some ways. Very relaxed. Very lighthearted. Not a lot. There's not really a dark tone to this movie. Like most of the film is shot in daylight. So for all you people that like to watch uh, movies with light tones, this one's probably for you. I like movies a little bit darker. We'll get the Venom Let There Be Carnage. You'll have fun with that review. This ain't Venom, this is Shang-Chi. Another thing I like about the, po about the movie is the post credit scene, or the mid credit scene. So Shang-Chi and Wong, they're analyzing the rings, right? And they find out that the rings are centuries years old. They don't know where it comes from or what it's made of. Live with a theory. We'll get to that theory later. The parts that I didn't like about this movie, the plot is somewhat confusing and sometimes it doesn't make any sense. So for an example, you have Shang-Chi, he stops by a fight club, and the person he has to fight is his sister. What a coincidence. He goes into the fight club, and the first person he runs into is his sister. It's kind of a strange, bizarre coincidence that that happens. And it's, it's a small chance that that will happen in real life, too. And if you're separated from your sibling at birth, Chances of reuniting are infinitesimal. Nobody runs right into a sister. Of all people, how convenient. And at that moment, then it happened. The movie would not have gone the way it was, the, the way it did. The movie would have ended with Shane Chi looking for his father, and his father was mentally broken down and probably destroyed the world. So that right there, that kind of got me. I was like, eh, okay, I can get it, but. I don't, I don't buy it. I don't buy that coincidence. It's not that believable. That was the only nitpick I had. Now back to my theory about the Ten Rings and where they came from. I think the Eternals know something about those rings. We'll get the Eternals review, my thoughts about it. Not a lot of people are liking that film right now. I thought it was alright, but we'll get to, to my thoughts on the Eternals reviews in, them in February or March. But like I said, I think the Eternals know a little bit about the rings. Apparently, apparently these rings have a beacon, some type of tracking devices like the Infinity Stones. And I know who the beacon is calling out for. The Silver Surfer. And that's going to lead to the Fantastic Four. So we've got a fifth Fantastic Four me coming, coming out. Not too excited about it. They made four other iterations and they failed. I don't hate them all, but a lot of people do, so I don't know why they're rushing a fifth one 
And if that one fails, it could. I mean, what can they do that they haven't done in the other four iterations? God, I hope they, they don't bring back Doctor Doom. Don't bring him back. I don't want Doctor Doctor Doom being the villain in the next Fantastic Four movie. I don't want the same origin story either. Do what you did in Spider-Man: Homecoming. Different origin, different villain, please. But anyway, this stuff is going to lead to the Fantastic Four. And do you know who the big villain in Fantastic Four is? It's not Doctor Doom. It's not MODOK. It's Galactus. He's the next Thanos. Galactus is coming. He wants revenge. The last time we saw Galactus was in Ride of the Silver Surfer. They turned him into a dust cloud. Maybe they can correct Tim Story's mistakes. And we'll get to the Fantastic Four movie reviews when that movie comes out. So be patient. Wait. Those movie reviews will be coming out. Maybe in 2024. In honor of the 30th anniversary of the unreleased Fantastic Four movie. But folks, I think Galactus is coming. In Shang-Chi, this is an important film that sets up the future of the MCU. Forget Spider-Man. No Way Home, that's going to set up probably something else. Forget Doctor Strange. It's Shang-Chi and Eternals. That's where it's at. So up the more cosmic universe, like Guardians of the Galaxy foreshadowed. But Shang-Chi, my rating, a 10 out of 10. Definitely. I think it beats Black Widow. I think so far. This is the best film in 2021. This has been your Shang-Chi review. I am out. The movie gets a 10 out of 10, like I said a few seconds ago.